this is Blake with the Three Hand Hunter channel and I must say I had a lot of fun making this video. <laughs> it was the most fun video to, to do. Anyway, I'm glad you guys are here and I'm, I really wanted to talk to you about firearms and wristwatches. I, I find it interesting that there's not a lot of videos on this subject and um, I'm gonna just give you my own personal opinions. So let me first off start by saying I am an enthusiast. I am a watch enthusiast. I'm also a firearms enthusiast and I'm not a professional. So um, this would be a great opportunity for you guys to jump into the comment section and, and just let us know if you have, have had any experiences with firearms, with watches, and what's happened with you. I have fired a lot of firearms with a lot of different watches and I feel like I've got some pretty good experience with doing so and I have some opinions that I wanted to share with you. Because I think most of us, when, you, when you're wearing a, a, a wristwatch and you fire a firearm, you start to worry about, oh my goodness, is, my, is it gonna damage my watch? Am I gonna lose a hand um, you know, in, in, on the watch, on the watch dial? There are those questions, and I'm just gonna tell you from my experience, I've never had a problem with a watch and using a firearm but I do think about the damage that could happen with a, a watch, especially a nicer Swiss timepiece like a Marathon. And I know these are built tough. This is probably the watch that I would take to, to Armageddon. <laughs> it would be this watch. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't think about things when I'm, when I'm firing a weapon. Um, so I, I, so I wanted to talk a little bit about it. And let me also mention to you guys, I am a, I, I am a, a firearm enthusiast. I didn't grow up with uh, shooting shooting guns. I, I, I am ex-military, ex-combat veteran. Um, so I am a um, I'm a you know firearm enthusiast. I'm not a hunter either. Uh, I, I just I'm not a hunter. So I just wanted to put that out there so you guys know where where I am and where I stand. I just uh, I enjoy blowing things up. It's kind of fun. It's kind of expensive nowadays too. And I'm sure most of you that use firearms, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's talk about these watches. Um, I'm gonna go give you a real quick opinion on watches and firearms. If you really wanna be safe, use a digital watch, really, if you, if you don't. But, you know, I like to use different timepieces when I'm out on the range. And um, the GSAR, this is my keeper watch. I am a Marine. Um, former and uh, I love this watch it's built for this type of business but you notice that there when you're using a mechanical timepiece there's a lot of little moving parts if you've ever um, tried to manually uh, you know regulate your watches you know just the slightest you know one hundredth of a millimeter touch could really uh, you know throw off the timing of your mechanical timepiece well, when you're firing a weapon and you see it, you know, you see it move after and, re and reverberate after every shot, you have to imagine that that is a risk. There's also a risk that you pop off one of the hands or maybe one of these tritium loom markers on the dial get knocked off. That's entirely possible. And I think that is a risk when you wear a, a, a wristwatch like this. Now, if you take the you know this is a, a citizen tough eco drive i really really enjoy this watch and by the way this is not a review video of any of these watches which i will do uh sometime in the near future uh the citizen eco drive i love this watch it has a battery capacitor in it um it's got less moving parts but it still has three hands on it so there is still a risk that you know one of those little uh, one of the little applied markers that you see on the dial one of those could pop off, you know, if it gets jolted too quick. You know, there are there are risks. But I'm, I'm gonna go back to the marathon here in just a second. I got something I wanna tell you about that. Then, you know, here's the G-Shock. And I believe these are the best watches to shoot firearms with. Whether it's, you know, it's this is probably more of a risk because it does have hands that could come loose. Um, just a, a regular digital G-Shock. This is the G100, um, the Casio Oak, if you will. I really enjoy this watch and, and it's great. It's a great tactical watch. It's it's fun to wear when out on the range. It's very easy to wear. It's super light, especially when you throw on this NATO strap. So these are just a few choices that I have. Um, and again, I wanna mention, if you have any experience 
with firearms using you know mechanical timepieces automatic watches please give me or give me give us your comments down below i'd love to hear them i know other people are going to want to want to read what you have to say now i want to talk a little bit about this heavy headed marathon gsar i don't have a bracelet for this particular watch see the 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 watch head it is extremely heavy for this watch that means it's really when you wear it on your wrist uh wrist excuse me i'm, I'm wearing an, a borealis estoril just so you know this is a strap code bracelet um shark mesh great watch love it okay but when you wear uh, a gsar and i'm going to put this on my wrist really quick for you guys when you uh when you wear a gsar you can see this um very very and i'm going to keep it kind of loose on purpose this watch head is extremely heavy right you see this uh this nato this is an what they call it, an extreme nato it's very thick right it will if i tighten it strap it down it does secure to my wrist very tight when you're firing when you have a, a a watch head that's this big, every time you every time you 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 shoot a weapon, especially once you're in, you're using a bigger caliber weapon, like in the videos you'll see there there's an AK seven six two AK forty seven or, or AK uh, rifle seven six two, and those rounds, you know, they do jolt your the watch head. Okay, if it's not securely strapped down, so that's why when you're wearing uh, a watch, especially a mechanical timepiece, my favorite. Um, uh, uh, strap for this is actually this Zulu very strong it doesn't it's like it's not FKM rubber but this thing does I mean this has been the hell and back I've been through mountains and streams and everything with every type of climate with this particular strap it is awesome and it's big enough where I can strap it over the top of anything that I'm wearing um, it's, it's, but this really is a secure strap for this particular watch. Okay. These NATO straps are great. These extreme NATOs, they're very thick. You, you use like a, this is a Meritech County Com. I mean, these are very tactical feeling straps, but they're very thin. They, they are. And I enjoy wearing this strap with this marathon on a daily basis because it's more comfortable and it keeps the profile of the watch lower. But when I, when I go shooting, I use this extreme NATO and you can see the difference between the two. So just remember when you're, when you're using a firearm and you have a mechanical timepiece, I, I would guess, and this again, I'm no watch expert and I'm not a watch maker, but my guess would be you wanna keep the watch as secure to your, your strap or your wrist, excuse me, as possible when you're shooting a firearm. Um, but I had a lot of fun doing this video and you know, if you don't want to put any of your wrists or your watches at risk, just wear, just go get a $40 Casio, like one of those, um, you know, one of those models that are just, you know, just the, the square rectangular ones. Get one of those. This way you don't have any risk to your, to your precious mechanical timepieces. But if you're like me, you know, I don't mind having a little flare when I'm out on the range, when I'm out in the desert shooting, I don't mind having a little bit of fun with my timepieces and I've, I've shot plenty and I've used uh, plenty of timepieces shooting them and I've never had an issue, but if you have, please let us know. And um, if you made it this far, guys, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Blake. I'm a bit of a watchaholic and if you've made it this far, you might be one too. So um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content and make sure you uh, give me a thumbs up because I just spent, uh, the amount of money I spent on ammo making this video, I think I could have bought another Swiss timepiece. Anyway, you guys have a great one. I'll see you in the next video.